Hey, what's up everyone? Craig here. And this week, I'm gonna be talking to you about growing collar cages, commonly known as elephant ears, and how you can grow them in the UK, either as a house plant or in your own tropical styled garden for that magnificent jungly giant foliage. But before we do, if you're liking the content that's coming out on this channel, same as always, don't forget to hit subscribe and do your bit towards growing this community of tropical and exotic plant enthusiasts. Thank you. Right, let's get into it. Collocations are native to tropical parts of um, Asia and India, where they are grown as a food crop. The underground part of the plant, the tuber, which is like its bulb, is edible and only on some cultivars, so don't try and eat the ones you're buying from garden centers here. And I think it has to be processed a certain way, but it is grown as a food crop. Um, but it's also grown, especially in countries like here in the UK, for its ornamental value. It's got those huge heart-shaped structural jungly leaves and collocages are great house plants as well. Um, they're just really useful plants for adding that jungly tropical vibe to a space and they are well worth growing and they're really not that difficult. As I said, collocages are adapted to warm tropical climates and as such they've evolved some mechanisms to help them survive and one of them is really really cool. They are hydrophobic that means the leaves repel water, like a duck's back. And I think that's an adaption so that in tropical rainforests, where there's constant monsoons and downpours of rain, it's gonna stop that water sticking to the leaf and it will stop any damage from the weight of water. But it will also stop any potential rot forming on a constantly wet leaf in those sort of tropical climates. The hydrophobicity of the leaf is a result of tiny microscopic waxy bumps on the leaf that act as a kind of a repellent and it just helps the water glide off of the leaf and when you're watering your plants of an evening you can't help but play with this mechanism of collocages it just is fascinating to look at i know a lot of people call them the waterproof plants now for all of that tropical foliage and that impressive architectural value that collocages give they're actually surprisingly easy to grow you can either buy them as a plant early in the season or in summer, or you can buy them as a dormant tuber in winter and spring. And they are really easy to grow from that tuber, and that's the most affordable way to buy your plants. You can also buy them as plug plants because they're being propagated um, in labs now from tissue culture. So you'll get clones of one variant or one cultivar of a colocasia, and that's becoming more and more affordable as colocasias are becoming more popular. But to grow them from a tuber, you will buy that tuber and you'll put it in a pot. I'd stick to something like this, a nine centimeter pot. You don't want your tuber sitting wet in loads of compost before it started growing because that's gonna encourage rot and we don't want this. We want it to stay as healthy as possible. So by minimizing the amount of wet compost you've got around your tuber, you're gonna increase the chances of it shooting and growing. And because they originate from tropical climates, they're gonna need heat. So a sunny windowsill will be fine, a propagator if you've got one, or like I've got the privilege of doing now that I've got a greenhouse. But I grew these well before I had a greenhouse. So a windowsill or a propagator is absolutely fine. And that bottom heat's just gonna help mimic that tropical climate that they're used to that would encourage the new leaves to grow. As soon as they start growing, don't be tempted to pot them on straight away. You want this pot to be almost full of roots before you pot it on. Um, some say that collocasias and alocasias, which are a very similar plant, will actually put out bigger leaves if you restrict the roots slightly. So I always keep mine in a smaller pot than you'd expect. Um, these ones behind me, I've been growing on from plugs and they've been in here for I don't know, two months, maybe three. And I will let more roots form in that pot before I pot it on. You can see that they're doing perfectly fine. They're even starting to spread and run. Probably in a, maybe no more than another month, four weeks, I'll pot that on. It also means you can grow more in a smaller space, which if you're a plant addict like me, is a winner. Now it's not just heat collocations need, 
Um, because of that warm tropical climate that they're used to, they need plenty of moisture. And even though they repel it from their leaves, the roots need quite a bit. And some collocages are actually sold as aquatic plants, kind of for the marginal areas of ponds. That's how much they love water. So don't be afraid to give them plenty of water, especially if you're keeping them in small pots like I am. Those pots have a tendency to dry out. So either keep a bottom dish under the tray, under the pot, sorry, or water regularly. And when you're watering, to get the biggest, healthiest leaves, I'd say use a high nitrogen feed. Remember, nitrogen is the part of fertilizers that encourages healthy leaf formation. So find a liquid feed and once or twice a week during the growing season, just apply that to the base of the plant. Try and avoid the leaves because some fertilizers can burn the leaves. And collocages are all about their big, beautiful leaves and we don't want to scorch them. So apply your fertilizers to the base of the plant. Summer with collocages is the easy part. They will just get bigger and better. Um, you don't want to plant them out until nighttime temperatures are around 10 degrees Celsius and above. Any cooler than that and the plants won't be happy at all. Remember, warm tropical climates. Now, they will seem a bit slow when you plant them out. That's just the shock of them acclimatizing. But as summer's in full swing, come August time here in the UK, your collocages will be growing at an incredible rate. And honestly, you will be so impressed with the size of leaves you get, even with some cultivars that you can grow from seed. So what do you do in autumn and winter? Because collocages are tender plants, they're gonna need winter protection. And there are two ways you can do this. One is to bring them indoors, either to your greenhouse or into your house, and give them plenty of light and warmth. And they will keep some of their leaves, um, but they'll stop growing. They're out of season, but you can keep them as a house plant. The other option, and this is how I used to do it before I had my greenhouse, is to cut back all of the leaves right down to the tuber that's below soil. Lift that tuber out of the soil and store it dry and dormant. You can store it in newspaper, um, sand, perlite. Um, you can even sprinkle some sulfur over the surface of your tuber to, just to prevent rot. And you're just going to store it like how you would uh, dahlia tubers or your daffodil bulbs if you buy new bulbs in. And when it comes to spring and you want things to start growing, you can just plant it out again in a small pot with compost like you did the previous season. Now over the years, I've grown a few different types of collocasias and I started with the regular massive leaved green collocasia esculanta, which is a winner. It just grows huge. Um, it's reliable and it will produce tiny offsets on the tubers so you can grow multiple plants from one big healthy parent plant. I also grow Colocasia Blue Hawaii. Now this is one of my favorite Colocasias. It's got big leaves with red purple leaf veins, but all through the leaf, there's like a, a wavy pattern of um, blue markings and that gets a lot better when the plant's in full sun. It's a Colocasia that produces by offsets and pups really readily. Um, so you can have multiple plants from, again, one healthy parent plant. And this year, for the first time, I've grown a colocasia from seed. Now, I got my seeds from Mike Clifford, and I'm sure most of you that watch this channel know him, but if you don't, I'll put a link to his Instagram account in the description below. Now, I bought seeds for colocasia Thai giant, and the clue is in the name, Thai giant. I sowed these seeds this spring. So technically, this is a seedling, and look how big the leaves are. It's bonkers. This is what I love about tropical plants. They all grow at an incredible, crazy rate because they're competing in that tropical environment where there is water and nutrients and light available, so every plant's just going for it. So if you can cultivate those plants here in the UK, you're gonna benefit from that giant jungly foliage adaption. I'm also growing Colocasia Royal Hawaiian Aloha, which is part of the Hawaiian series. And this has fast kind of wormed its way into my heart because its leaves are really, really nice. They look okay from the front. It's kind of a dark wavy leaf, but from the behind, it's got this lime green leaf veins that contrast really, really nicely against the dark main part of the leaf. And it just looks stunning. 
in the evening or in the morning when the sunlight is shining through those leaves, it's exactly where you'd expect to see the little pads of tree frogs in the rainforest. You all know that picture, where the silhouetted frog on the back of the leaves. Colocasia leaves are exactly where you'd expect to see that. And this year, I treated myself to a new set of plug plants. And I've been growing them on in these nine centimeter pots. So I'm just gonna talk you through these and how I'm finding growing these. Now I got these off of Carl. Um, I bought them from Carl at Turnit Tropical. And over the past couple of years, I'm happy to say he's become the Colocasia king in the UK. He seems to get so many different varieties. So it's worth checking him out as well as my shop. But check Carl out, it's a community. I'll put a link in the description, Carl, don't worry. Right, let's have a look. This beauty, and I really, really like this one, is Colocasia Black Sapphire Gecko. Now, I know a lot of the Gecko series have spots in the center of the leaf here where it joins the petiole at the back of the leaf, but this one doesn't. But it is a real beauty. Jet black leaves, like a purpley black stem. Um, it's a winner. This has grown from a plug really happily and healthily and I've had no problems at all. So this one is definitely worth giving a go if you can get hold of a plant, a plug or a tuber. Next up is Colocasia esculenta white lava. Now this is one that I've wanted for a while. As it matures, each leaf vein is surrounded by white markings, like white lava flowing down the leaf and then following in the valleys of these leaf veins. So far, I've got no white lava, <laughs> but nonetheless, it's a nice plant and it's got that dot that you'd expect from the gecko series. It's got a green reverse, green leaf veins and really nice purple um, petioles coming up from the tuber. Again, worth a try. I'll keep an eye out for an update on the channel or on my Instagram account, and I'll post a picture when that white lava starts to show up. Okay, this one is Pink China. I expect most of you know this because it's featured on Gardener's World a couple of times this year, and it was mentioned that people have found it to be hardy. It's got three winters here in the UK. It's called Pink China because of the pinker um, leaf stems. Now, they haven't quite colored up to the point I'd want for me just yet. There's a little pest there. But it should be a winning Colocasia and Pink China is great for sending out runners like this and rooting down in the pot and giving you multiple plants. Um, so if you can get a Pink China, and I know a few people have had them in, I'm gonna try this one outside once it gets big enough and I'll see if these runners will form a colony of jungly leaves in my tropical style garden. Okay, this one, Colocasia Black Magic. Now, Black Magic, myself and other growers have found to be a bit of a pain. Leaves can just get scorched and brown up and then drop off like this one did. But since it's done that, and it's got a bit more mature, it seems to be a lot more reliable. And I've been surprised by black magic because yeah, it's putting out black leaves as you'd expect from the name. But this is the second from last leaf it put out. This is the newest. It has a green undertone. I think I like it. I wasn't expecting it, but I think I like it. It's a green undertone with kind of black waves going through the leaf and then black leaf veins. And it's a nice plant and it's putting out nice big leaves. I expect this one's gonna need potting up soon. Yeah, three to four weeks, I'll pot this one on. Um, but for now, I'll just keep giving it plenty of food and plenty of water. This one, another dark leaf is black ripple. Now, when I bought these as plugs, this was my favorite. Nice black leaved one jet black again with a maroon stem. It's a really, really nice color. But I'm guessing it got its name Black Ripple from the fact that the leaves are quite wavy. They don't sit flat like this one. They have a slight texture to them. 
which I think is a nice point of difference. Um, it's growing a bit slower than the others. Some black leaf plants do, they just don't have the same amount of chlorophyll in them, which is what plants use to photosynthesize and feed themselves. Um, but it's a black leafed colocasia, what's not to like? Now this one is Colocasia Hawaiian Punch. There's another Colocasia in the Hawaiian series. Um, and it's, it's similar to the Hawaiian Aloha that's growing out in the garden. It's putting out nice big leaves, a bit of a texture to them. It's got that red leaf veining on the back, which is a really nice contrast. And it's got a slightly lighter pinky purpley uh, leaf stem, which is nice. And this one looks like it's going to put out pups too. So hopefully I can propagate from this. And the last colocasia that I bought as a plug this year was Maui Gold. Now I've seen this one um, in pictures. Maui Gold is referring to kind of the golden green of the leaves. If you compare that to this one, you can see that they're golden. And when you compare it next to a black leaved colocasia, you can see there's a really, really nice contrast. I'm hoping that I can get this one through because a lot of the golden leaf plants I've struggled with. Um, this one's just starting to get that golden color now. I think it's gonna get more intense as the plant matures because all of the first leaves the plug put out weren't that different from the rest of the collocations I'm growing. But if this one continues to go in this direction, it's gonna be a winner. It's Colocasia Maui Gold. So there you go. You've seen collocations that I've been growing for years. You've seen collocations growing in my garden. You've seen the collocations behind me that I've been growing on from plugs, as well as growing collocations from seed. Collocations are an amazing plant for a tropical or exotic style garden or as a house plant. And I hope I've shown you how easy they are to grow. If you haven't got it in your tropical garden already, I urge you to get a plant and try growing collocations. If you haven't got some of the ones you've seen in this video. I hope this has inspired you to go and hunt out some new cultivars. And again, as I said at the start of the video, if you like what's coming out on this channel, please do your bit and just hit subscribe. It will take a second and I will really appreciate it. Thank you. Now, don't forget to go check out my other videos where I've got tips, uh, tours and vlogs and go and check out my plant and seed shop, which is frequently updated and has been super popular. So thank you to everyone who's been buying plants from me. I will see you all in the next video.